As an investigator and a GA pilot, nothing pains me more than to see pilots, their friends, and their families lose their lives in accidents that are completely preventable. And low altitude stalls are just that, completely preventable. From day one in pilot training, we're taught to recognize and recover from stalls and to never turn back to the field after an engine failure because that could lead to a stalled condition. But at some point, as pilots, we stop training for those situations. We don't stop flying, but we stop training. Ask yourself, when was the last time that you practiced stall recovery? If your answer is your last flight review, that's just not good enough. At a low altitude, recovery from a stall spin situation is highly unlikely. Therefore, prevention is essential. Indecision, improper planning, and inadequate training all hinder the pilot's ability to effectively respond to an in-flight emergency, such as a stall. In July 2011, a commercial pilot was killed when his airplane's engine lost power shortly after takeoff. Ahead of the airplane lay a long dirt road and a hay field, yet the pilot sought safety in the runway behind him, and in the attempted turn, lost control. In August 2010, Two hunters were killed while scouting for moose when the pilot stalled the airplane at low altitude and crashed. Witnesses reported seeing the airplane flying at approximately 100 feet just prior to the accident, and numerous moose hoof prints were found surrounding the accident site. We see a handful of these aptly named moose turn stall accidents every year in Alaska. In March 2010, an airplane was damaged when the pilot attempted a return to the runway after the engine lost power. During the attempted turn, the pilot lost control of the airplane and crashed about 500 feet short of the runway. Directly ahead of the airplane when the engine lost power was an 1,800 foot clearway. There are at least five things that you can do to avoid being involved in this type of accident. Number one, honestly assess your skills. Ask yourself if you're ready to quickly and safely react to a stall in the airplane you're flying. Are you sure? If not, Get the training and resources to ensure that you are. Two, know your plane. If you're in a plane that you have little or no experience with, make sure you understand the stall speeds and characteristics of that aircraft. Three, react immediately. At the first indication of a stall, immediately reduce the airplane's angle of attack. An immediate response is crucial to a safe recovery. Four, Manage distractions when you're maneuvering at low altitude so you don't get into a stall situation. And five, don't show off. Unless you're a trained air show pilot, resist the temptation to show off by performing maneuvers for those on the ground. Such distractions have too often led to humiliating and deadly outcomes. I would not be here to speak with you today if it weren't for continuous training and repetitive preparation on what I would do when and not if a problem occurred, especially on takeoff and landing. This is why professional flight crews train so often and brief every flight with a statement saying, if this happens, this is what we're going to do. Great thing to remember though, is that you don't have to be a professional pilot to fly professionally.